Good morning. Wherever you are in the world, good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in for the uh, this episode of Cichlids and Coffee. And uh, if I can get a sound check and video check from anyone who's watching, just tell me how it sounds and how it looks. And while you do that, I will get a sip of coffee. Thank you, Denny. Denny says that sound and video are good. Always good to be sure before we carry on here. So uh, thank you, Leo, for that, to hit the, uh, hit the like button. And we have a lot to talk about today. And I'm, I'm excited about a whole bunch of stuff. And let's go ahead and uh, wait for a few folks to get on. Let me go ahead and greet a couple of you. I know that some of you got here a little early and we're having some discussions. And uh, let's see, Fishman Marcus. Hey, Fishman, you know, I used to always give a, uh, I used to always give some stickers to the first one that arrived. If you want some stickers, Go ahead and send me your, your mailing address to ben.o.cichlid at, uh, at gmail, and I'll send you some, uh, some of the channel stickers. How's that sound? Thank you for being an early bird. I appreciate it. Hey, Richard. Richard's here. Elijah and R. Baglio. A lot of my buddies are here. And uh, hey, Denny. Denny's the uh, today's moderator, key moderator. Hopefully a couple others will be arriving. Paul's here. I know GP had something to handle this morning with his family but he is planning on showing up. Hey, Cat Sailor. Glad you're here, buddy. And uh, we have Nate Newsom from Houston. I lived in Houston for a while. Lo loved it down there. Elijah Davis. Leo Contreras is here. James Manning. And got a pair of redfin boilie eyes. Wow. Those can be very beautiful fish. My experience with them is they can also be very aggressive. They, you, again, like we talked about, it's the luck of the draw. Hopefully you've got you've got a couple there that are gonna be uh, be good in a community and play nice, but man, they are beautiful when they uh, when they fully color up. Sometimes they they get like an orange red, which is just really really striking. And uh, hey, zip z zip, Jerry's fish room. Hey Jerry, another moderator here, Jerry Martin. Thank you, Jerry, for joining in. And uh, Jerry, just as a heads up. I have an upcoming video on um, on the strangest looking cichlids. The strangest looking cichlids. My favorite strange looking cichlids. And I think I'm going to steal a clip from one of your videos. Because you have one of your favorite fish is what I consider one of the strangest looking cichlids. Beautiful, but strange looking. And uh, maybe you can guess which one that is. But I'm going to be stealing that uh, a little clip from your video. I'm sure you won't, I'm sure you're not going to mind. And Fishman Marcos, let's see here. GP, hey GP, I'm glad you're here. I know you're busy this morning. Hey Tom, and Tom tells me the sound and video are good. That's good. And Snorkel King Ronnie's here. And you know, um, you you say you look and sound marvelous as usual, Snor Snorkel King. If you go back to some of my early live streams, what you'll see is a bit of a dumpster fire when it comes to. Uh, video and sound. It's been a long learning process. <laughs> and for those of you from the good old days, I thank you for hanging in there. <laughs> we had live streams that went upside down, that uh, disappeared and then came back. Uh, anyway, all kinds of good stuff. Hey, Richard. Richard comes in with a $5 super chat. Thank you for that super chat, my friend. And um, I do want... Uh, <laughs> He's somebody who gets my joke about the 100% money back guarantee. Thank you, Richard. And uh, I am going to get a green tear. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get maybe three of them and grow them out. And um, we'll see how that goes. So uh, welcome, everybody. And um, let's go ahead and officially start this. Somebody said they want an update on the 90, on the 90 gallon. I, I'll do that. I'll do that as we go along. And um, uh, remind me. Remind me as we go, I will go and uh, I will definitely give you an update. The 90 is just looking, is just looking very, very good. And uh, the fish are thriving. And uh, I'll show you, I'll show you here in a second. And uh, well, let's go ahead and uh, officially, officially start this live stream with the dropping 
the dropping logo. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that sub button and the bell and all that good stuff. And that tells YouTube that you like the channel, that there's something worthwhile, and YouTube will go ahead and recommend the channel to other fish keepers, just like you and me, and that's a good thing. I appreciate that. And uh, thank you. I thank you in advice, in, in, in advance. I think 33%, 30% are subscribed that watch the videos. That's 70% that could be that are not. So uh, hit that hit that button. Thank you, Steve Ferguson. Four ninety nine. We'll put that towards the uh, towards the green tear. What do you say? Four ninety nine into the green tear, into the green tear fund. So um, <clears throat> a lot to talk about. A lot uh, busy week last week. I had a, a very nice uh, uh, interview get published, and you can you can see it here. That's the uh, the website for it or the the address, but here it is. It's called the Cichlid Stage, and uh, a fellow named Scott contacted me, and uh, we did a lengthy interview. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about uh, my past, uh, my uh, my my fish keeping history, a little bit about me personally, uh, go to the Cichlid Stage and check out that that blog site, and uh, it's a pretty detailed interview about just about everything related to my my life as a as a fish keeper and uh that was very cool i really liked i liked the way it came out and uh and i had never even heard of the cichlid stage before and there's a lot of information there uh much of it from doctors you know like like doctorate people have doctorate degrees phds in in the field uh that you know contribute a lot of science and information which I thought was great. So check that out if you can. And maybe uh, maybe Denny or Jerry or GP can, can go ahead and copy and share that link. And anyone that wants to go see that uh, can go ahead and see that blog. It, it's uh, very, very cool. I also did a survey on the, um, on the community page of YouTube on nitrates. And I was, and I was kind of surprised at the results. The, uh, you know, when, when going back, let's say six, seven years ago, everybody was sort of shooting for the holy grail of zero to 10 nitrates, zero to 10 part per, parts per million in nitrates. And um, people were panicking, oh, my nitrates are 20. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm checking my tap. I'm uh, I'm doing 95% water changes three times a week, and my nitrates are at 20. And I'm help me, help me. And uh, and I'll tell you who loved that, who loved that panic, were the people who make water conditioners, uh, you know, nitrate related nitrate reduction products, whether it's uh, foam pads for your filters. I mean that kind of hysteria was definitely uh, funding a lot of uh, sales for uh, for these folks. and uh, But it, it's almost like over time, common sense and a few articles got pointed out about how some of these, uh, I think there was one famous article where this fish farm had, you know, 500, 1,000 part per million nitrates and was growing out these tremendous fish and... Uh, and so little by little, people started coming around and the survey results showed that people are not really like jolted into action un until it looked like 40 parts per million, in some cases, 80 and 100. So um, now I am in no way advocating that you should allow your nitrates to get high because it is not optimum. You know, it, it does it does provide some stress and um, it's nitric acid. OK. So if you have an aquarium, let's say, that uh, has high nitrates and hasn't had a water change for a long time, and the mineralization of the water, the calcium and the magnesium ha uh, primarily, have settled, and there's nothing really kind of neutralizing acid in the tank, you could have a pH crash. 
uh, with that high level of acidity, uh, the acid provided by the nitrate, nitric, nitric acid, right? You could have a tank crash, and all of a sudden your pH goes into a, a range that is uh, un, unacceptable to the kind of fish that you have, and you have a big die off. So um, at the same time, if you check your water and it's 40, you don't need to drop everything, 40 parts per million. You don't need to drop everything you're doing, uh, experience a, a rapid heartbeat and, and, and uh, you know, dump a bunch of prime or safe or fritz complete in the tank. You don't need to do that. You could probably do a 30 to 40% water change, assuming that your tap isn't pouring out 50 parts per million, right? You can do a water change and, uh, you know, do something that will not shock the fish. Don't do any major thing, anything that's going to really stress them out, which probably hurts more than 40 parts per million of nitrate. So, you know, we're taking it a little bit calmer now than we were six or seven years ago. And um, some people in the comments put that it wouldn't be until, you know, well over 100 that they would actually start to investigate start to dig in and look into what might be going on. But below that level, they really didn't, didn't really feel an, a sense of urgency. And um, one of the comments, which I tend to agree with, is that stability, stable, steady conditions that change gradually is more important than your, your, your parts per million. Not to ignore your parts per million, but realize that rapid, gradual, that a rapid, drastic shift of probably anything is, is going to create a little bit, a bit of a shock in your fish. Probably temperature and pH would probably be the, the, the biggest ones that could probably shock your fish the, the most. And with pH being far and away the the one that could probably have the biggest impact on the fish and their ability to, to be healthy. So um, at any rate, I thought this survey was interesting. It might be leading to a, uh, a video on nitrates, on just nitrates in general, in which I'll show some of the research that uh, talked about some of these fish that were doing fine, you know, breeding, and growing and doing everything normally at very high levels of nitrate. And not that you're going to be running a, a commercial fish farm. That's not what you want, right? But at the same time, I think our fish are far, far more tolerant than people who sell nitrate reduction products want you to believe. And that's just my opinion, okay? Love to hear your opinion. I'm always learning, but uh, that's just. That's just this my uh, this man's opinion. All right. So I thought that that survey was interesting. So um, let's get into now. I think I might have missed a couple of super chats here. What the heck is going on here? James Manning, Green Terror Fund. You getting the Gold Psalm or just Green? I want Gold Psalm. Gold Psalm for sure. Uh, the first I can. The first time I saw a. a a um, an adult gold psalm was in a small hole in the wall uh, fish store, local fish store in Hollywood. I did a walkthrough, and it just blew my mind. It was like, what? What is this fish? I I, I just had never seen one like it. I can still remember, just like. And the guy was about to close, and here I am filming, and I just come back from dinner with my wife, and I convinced her to stop at the store and uh, some of you maybe even watched the video um, and um, it was close to closing time. And I'm like, just give me five more minutes. Let me just film this fish a little more. <laughs> love, love at first sight. So it's going to be a gold song for sure. Definitely. Uh, Steve comes in with a big 24 99. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. And Steve, do you have a towel and stickers? I mean, if you get up over 20 bucks on a super chat, I got to send you a towel and stickers. So if you want a towel, and by a towel, I mean one of those great, got one laying around here somewhere, one of those aquarium co-op, aquarium co-op towels, 
best towels in fish keeping. And I'll send you a set of channel stickers if you don't have them already. So uh, thank you so much for that super chat. That's very nice of you. I appreciate that. And I'll tell you uh, where a lot of the, the money is going. I, I ended up paying $800 yesterday to the electrician. I now have the right amount of amperage. I have sockets in all the key places. So I'm not going to be running everything off of, off of you know, like everything in the room off of two strips, off <laughs> two of those strips, right, with multiples. So I'm not going to run everything off of two strips. I have now about, uh, about 10 sockets with, uh, and, and coming out of the, you know, he put in separate circuits. So my fish room is not going to be flipping switches, uh, flipping circuits and being shut off for a few hours before I noticed that, that a circuit blew on me. So, uh, so that's done. The, ele the electrical part of the, of the uh, fish room is done. Now, Joe over at Glass Cages had a personal issue come up. So we have to delay the delivery of the tank until a week from Wednesday. So the 210 will be here a week from this coming Wednesday. And uh, the whole thing is, 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 is sort of pacing itself out in a good way because now I'm ready electrically. I have the, the proper, you know, the, the proper amperage and everything else to handle everything with that 210. So I can get it plugged in and not worry that I'm going to blow fuses, which was my biggest concern. So, um, so let's go ahead and um, get into today's topic. I wanted to talk to you about the five reasons I, I think that that big chunky fish are are so cool and and uh, why I think they rock like I say in the uh, thumbnail and this is not a knock on small fish there are some small fish that are absolutely gorgeous that are their colors are beautiful right so this is not a knock on those fish and by the way are you I know some of you mentioned you're drinking from one of these cups. Can you go ahead and mention it in the comments? Cichlids and coffee, any of the cups, any of the uh, fish that rock cups, cups, let me know what kind of cup you're drinking out of. I'd love to hear about it. For those of you who um, would like to support the channel, you can get these cups at my Teespring, Teespring uh, store, as well as sweatshirts and t-shirts and stuff that support the channel. Also, if you use the Amazon link to get to Amazon, and buy anything at Amazon, whether it's from my fish store, fish keeping store, or anywhere on Amazon, it gives the, the channel a credit. So just some ways that you can uh, support the channel. And also uh, a big shout out to the Cichlid Shack, James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack. Now, we have to change the, um, the Cichlid Shack coupon. It's still Shack Attack 10. It's still Shack Attack 10, but it's 10% uh, off on orders of $99.99 uh, or greater, which if you buy four or five uh, adult colored up cichlids, you're going to be over $99. But he said that on the lower amounts, he, he was really losing money. I mean, he, he packages things in thick styrofoam, Stick, very thick styrofoam, double bags them in a very thick plastic, and then does a, a thick plastic bag around all the bags. I mean, it's a lot of packaging, a lot of time. And so he said, look, it's just, it's, it's just cutting into, into it too much. So if you place an order of $99.99 or greater, you can get 10% off using Shack Attack 10. So just want to uh, do the, let you know that that's the change. AGP comes in with a super chat of 20. And GP, I don't know if you need a towel. I know you don't need, I know you got stickers. But uh, if you'd like another co-op towel, just let me know, my friend. Anything over 20, you get a co-op towel. That's the game today. As people put money into the Green Terror Fund. So let's talk about today's topic and why I... Uh, why I love big fish. And in doing this, I thought it'd be good just to share with you some of the big guys, some of the big guys that I used to have and back in, and, and these fish behind me, 
are going to turn into big guys. I've got some fish back there that are going to get over 15 inches. And uh, I don't know if you folks remember, this was the original Vinny. This was the original Vinny, a 10-inch Venusis. And boy, I love that fish. I sold him. He's in a good home now in a very big aquarium. And uh, I'll tell you, what, what I love about big fish, I love the eye movement. They're so expressive. Their eyes move around. They track you. They look you in the eye. I mean, they, here he is right there. Right there, he was staring me down, reminding me that he was the boss. And you can see the, the large amount of eye movement, the contact. And also the fact that they really, are, unless you, you really turn the lights on and hit the glass, they're not going to startle. They don't startle. Uh, they come up to the glass, they interact with you. And, uh, and that's another point, the interaction. They're, I kind of refer to them as water pups water pups because they're i mean they're just big and chunky and uh here's the here's the uh here's the trout this trout was about 10 inches look at this trout i think i picked this trout up from the wonder of cichlids just a total beast and he was not afraid of me he would just stand there and look at me and uh Just a gorgeous fish. And the other point, one of the reasons I love them, is feeding. If you've ever hand-fed a very large fish like this, and I'm not talking about the fish that latch onto your finger that have teeth, because that's no fun. So I'm not talking about your dovi, uh, you know, fish like that. Uh, I'm talking about like these types of fish. You maybe have little micro teeth, but... You're feeding them some frozen krill, you're holding it, and they stick their head out of the tank, and they grab the krill, and they hold on to your finger, and you can practically pull them entirely out of the tank, and it's, it's actually pretty funny. The other thing that's kind of funny, and, and some people might think it's annoying, I think it's funny, is, the, uh, is how they'll splash. They actually will, will come up and they will just splash the heck out of you and the, the floor. There was a guy on YouTube who's, you, whose video went viral. It has like over a million views. And he had, I think, a big dovi. And when he would feed them, the fish would come up and turn and flap water out with its tail and just drench him. And I think in the video, it was like, why I don't feed my fish before I go to work. And... Uh, when you have fish this big, and, and I don't know if you can even tell, I mean, that fire hap at the top center there going across, that fire hap was, was eight inches and so thick, just a thick, thick fish. I mean, you can get a perspective when you think that Vinny's, Vinny's 10 inches, right? You can get an idea of where, where these fish are at in size. And look at the tail on that trout. That trout would come up to the top and flap that tail, and I'd have to have towels down. So <clears throat> this, is, this is where I'm heading. That electric blue there is, is six inches. So imagine that, look at the size of that Fusco. This is where I'm heading. I'm heading again towards having these big puppy dogs, these, ma these massive puppy dogs, that I just I just love, and uh, let's see if I can get the one. And I already have a uh, a Venusis in the tank behind me that I think is going to be as pretty as Vinny was. He's got beautiful markings. So the reason I love big fish. Feeding them, having them splash me when I'm feeding them, having them grab my fingers, the fact that they're not afraid and interact with me, don't run to the back, but actually come to the glass and stare me down. 
growing them out like I did with this Venusus from two inches, one and a half to two inches, and turning them into beasts. That satisfaction of knowing that you took that fish from, a, from a, basically a juvie and grew him out into a monster. And I'll tell you one other reason. Another reason is that as I get older, bigger fish are just easier to see for me. <laughs> I can't really appreciate the fine detail of a, uh, of a snakeskin guppy like I used to. <laughs> I need to have something big. <laughs> well, maybe not really. <laughs> Anyway, as you get older, you appreciate a bigger fish. They're a lot easier to see. And uh, I've got some. With that, I'll segue into, into the 90. One of you asked, uh, you know, John Wallace asked for an update, I think it was, on the 90. And I'll show you. And uh, by the way, before I do, uh, bis Biscotti Nonya, you are welcome, my friend. And thank you for supporting the channel. Let's take a look at the 90. And I, the angle is going to be a little bit, a little bit funny because when I have the camera positioned, but you'll get, a, you'll get an idea. Well, there's the 90. And as you can see, these fish are doing really well. See if we can get a little interaction going. I'm loving these um, these heckali, these AC heckalis, and I'm not sure if you can tell, but they're starting to get those long threads at the top of their fins top of their dorsal. The viejas are starting to show a lot of pink. It's very, very pretty. I'm starting to get some actual red on my, on the red shoulders. And the geophagus, my goodness, these geophagus are incredible. And the starry knight, I don't know if you can see him, he's way back there. Let me come in a little more. Yeah, the way I have the camera positioned, it's a little bit hard, unless I can get them to come up here to the top. I think they're going to be fed. Anyway, the tank is doing great. The little Jack Dempsey in there is doing really well. The, um, the viejas are starting to blossom and, and, and show some great color. They're going to get up around 10 inches or more. I think the uh, Severums get up there, too. I mean, they get up there into the 10-inch-plus category. The Geos will get about six or seven. This Starry Knight, who, who today is blue, his spots are blue today. His spots will go from blue to white. But this Starry Knight will get up around 10 inches, and he'll be very thick. He'll be a very thick, a very thick and large fish. You know, uh, KG, I'm glad you're here. We have Kevin Green in the house. Check out his channel, KG Cichlids. And also check out uh, Jerry's Fish Room. I can't drop one pellet because I've got this, uh, this piece of uh, plexiglass on the top. I have to feed them from the back is how I feed them. So it wouldn't really, really help to drop a pellet in. Sorry, night over here. Come on over here. That Starry Night is absolutely gorgeous, and he hasn't been as aggressive recently as he normally is. He was chasing fish around for a lot, you know, a lot for a while there, and then now he's sort of calmed down, and he loves the cave that's in the bottom center. Hey, Mom Fountain comes in with 20. What is that? 20 pounds, I guess, for the GT fund. <laughs> Hey, Mon, go ahead and send me your address, my friend. 
Send me your address. So this story night also was from the Cichlid Shack. Just about everything in there was from the Cichlids, Cichlid Shack. Well, actually, no. The AC Heckleys and uh, the Red Spotted Severum I picked up at the Aquatic Critter here in Nashville. And, uh, and the, the little Jack Dempsey was from Glass Cages. That's why his name is Tom. Tom is the founder of Glass Cages. So that's the, uh, that's the 90, as you can see. It's thriving. And if you take a look at the tank behind me, I just did a video. I just did a video video on some of the more exotic fish, some of the more exotic African cichlids. And in the video, I featured fish like the gar and uh, you see that gar there near the top with those duck lips. He's got like duck lips. It's hilarious. And they actually go on their side to go between rocks when they're in the wild, and they love to eat baby mabuna. And uh, look at the, the coloration in the middle of the tank, that blue fish there. That's a living stone eye. And as you, if you keep your eye on him, you'll see him go spotted, and then all blue, and then spotted, and then all blue. He is constantly changing. He's like a cuttlefish. There he goes. He's spotted again. You see that? He's all spots now. Now, if you keep an eye on him, something will, so, something will catch his eye. There he is. He's all blue again. Now he's going to spots again. He is constantly changing his look. He is the, the tank boss. The Insignus that just swam across the tank. There he goes. The Insignus that is near center with the orange, with the yellow belly, absolutely gorgeous fish. Goes from a deep blue to a, to a yellow, to a yellow belly. You have the big spot down there in the corner by the cave. You can tell why he's called a big spot, right? He's got a big spot. Now my next video, my next profile video is going to talk about that Malawi hawk. I'm going to talk about that living stone eye, about the Venusus. And that Bucachromus notatania that is constantly swimming back and forth, he's in the bottom corner now. Bucachromus notatania, gorgeous fish. Again, a fish that'll get up to about 10 inches. This is why I need to get that 210-gallon uh, up and running, because a lot of these fish are going to get into a very big size real soon. The nooses grow like weeds, so I'm not sure how long that living stony can stay in charge. That Venusus starts to go all green, it's going to get real interesting because when they go all green blue, that means they're challenging for the top spot. And I suspect he'll be the one that challenges. You see that Placid Acromus Labidern at the top there? The uh, orange tail, blue face, orange tail, orange do dorsal, gorgeous fish. And then there's a uh, red shoulder in here. That was line bred by the cichlid shack. There goes the there goes the trout. You see, there's a fish that's going to get over 15 inches. That you can't have that fish in a 55 gallon. He's going to have to go to a six foot plus tank. Here's the kuini, kuini. Kuinis are beautiful. Camera doesn't do him justice. The other tank, which I'm not sure if you can really see it from, see if we can see it from this angle. There we go. Okay, there you go. That tank is, uh, you can see Skittles kind of pinned up against the wall there. He just kind of hangs out. He tries to stay out of the way of the, of the dragon blood. See the dragon blood? He's constantly asserting himself in the middle of the tank. There's no fish right now with a lot of fin damage. Everybody has just sort of found their spot. The autopharynx tetrastigma just stays up there in the top corner. The uh, Plastodochromus, Johnson Eye stays up there on the side. Here comes the uh, 
how beautiful that fish is with that yellow blaze. That's the phoenix. The phoenix will come out from time to time and challenge the dragon blood. But the dragon blood tries to control the open area of the tank. Now, this is going to be real interesting when I dump all of these fish into the, into the 210, and they all have to coexist. So these fish that you see here are going to be living with these fish. So that's going to be a very interesting arrangement, and I'll probably even throw in the, uh, I'll throw in my killer in there, the Eureka Red, and just see how he gets along. So some of you might have seen that video, the one on the um, Rare, the video on Rare. Maybe one of you can share a link on that. That's my last video, the Rare African Cichlid video. So that's an update on the tanks. Let's take a look at what your comments, and I hope I didn't miss any super chats, and thank you to everybody that has super chatted. Very, very kind of you. Uh, the support of the channel is always appreciated. And those of you who recently picked up cups from the, uh, I got a report from Teespring that some of you bought some coffee cups. Thank you for that. I appreciate that a lot. And Trey Cole, Trey Cole comes in with a super chat. Trey, send me your address. I'll send you a towel and some stickers. And uh, be sure to mention your screen name and also uh, that you had a $24.99 super chat. Be sure to mention that in the email to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. X, super glad I got to meet you in person. Finally, first Saturday, I've been able to catch this live. A little something for your uh, electric work, Ben. Thank you. I appreciate that. Every little bit helps. It was going to be eight seventy five. It came in at eight hundred. So I, he gave me a seventy five dollar break, probably because his dad kept cichlids, and I gave him some advice for his dad. <laughs> uh, okay, so now, KG uh, KG Slick cichlids. Kevin Green, one of my uh, moderators here, recently posted that he was getting some fry out of the mouth of uh, one of his fish. And Kevin is the one that bought uh, my, my uh, red cap. And that's this fish right here. We used to call him, or I used to call him Photoshop because nobody believed that uh, I hadn't Photoshopped the picture. So just to go along with all of it, I just, we just named him Photoshop. That's an actual untouched up photo of uh of photoshop <laughs> a beautiful fish and my my question for you kevin was was it is photoshop the the sire the dad the father of those fish that you were um actually getting out of the mouth of that female in that video i'm just kind of curious if they finally if they finally had some fry because uh, I, I tried a couple times, and my the fry wouldn't survive. But at any rate, as you can see, that's a beautiful fish. And when this tank behind me is is emptied out, and everybody has been moved to the 210, I'm I'm ac I'm considering turning this into a uh, Lethronops, a Lethronops tank. Uh, Lethronops are just absolutely gorgeous fish. If you're not familiar with them, look them up. Lethronops. I have uh, some profile videos on Lethronops. And John, thank you for the support, my friend. I appreciate that. Another super chat from John Wallace. That's true. That's true, GP. And uh, now he's, he's, with, uh, he's with Kevin Green, and he's uh, just as pretty. And I'm very happy he's in that home. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you folks are talking about. And let's answer some of your questions. What do you say? And uh, if you have a question, go ahead and ask it. Fifty-five gallons, James. Uh, if you if you have the caves, a fifty-five gallon with uh, Mabuna 
is actually workable. And I'll tell you, the best tip I ever got on that was to take your rock work and stack it so that they have caves not only on the bottom, right? But they also have caves on top. And they will claim caves above each other. So you can have like a, like instead of just the real estate of the, of the footprint of your tank, you can actually have more of a condominium setup and, uh, and, and grow upward. And they will, they will populate, you know, they will go ahead and, and claim the caves on top of each other. It's kind of cool, actually, when they do it. You'll have, you know, three or four levels and you have heads p poking out of each of those caves. It's, it's very, 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 very cool. And uh, so Sean says, do a special on each of the fish in the 90. Yes, I'd love to do that. I have done some profiles on them already. I think I did one on the uh, Geophagus uh, Surimanensis and uh, I think on the Viejas. But just a, a, a revisit to the tank, maybe talk about the red shoulders, the AC Hecalize. I did one on the Starry Night. And uh, if you remember, there's a Vincent Van Gogh uh, picture of a video I did, Starry Night. And, um, but on the Jack Dempsey, I could do something on the Jack Dempsey. That would be good. So yeah, I'd be, I think that would be a good idea. And, uh, but yeah, 55 for Mabuna could work. Strictly Mabuna. I wouldn't put any peacocks in there or haps. I don't know if I'd put anything in there, just Mabuna. Maybe a Synodonis, but you know, you really don't need a cleanup crew. And sometimes I know way back when I used to consider my um, my clown loach as a bit of a cleanup crew, but you don't need a cleanup crew in a in a cichlid tank because they're constantly sifting the the ground. You're constantly sifting the substrate, even in the South American tank. If if I dim the lights in the South American tank, if I dim them. What you'll see it, it looks like a moonscape. There's like, a, there's like a thousand pits where the geos have, have dug and spit, dug and spit. It's like a thousand little pits in the bottom of it. So I don't need a synodonis. I don't need a catfish because uh, these fish are constantly, constantly sifting through the, through, the, uh, through the substrate. So let's see what else you've got going on. Thank you, Denny. I appreciate that. Jason Ferguson, you know where I'm going to tell you to order from. <laughs> oh, I hit the, hit the camera. Sorry, I got so excited. Uh, you should order from uh, my friend over James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack. Get, get a 10% discount with Shack Attack 10. Now, that being said, and I think James would not mind me telling you that... Um, there are a lot of reputable and uh, legit fish keepers out there. I actually have a video called Where I Order Fish. And I think in it, I think I feature, I think I feature Live Fish Direct, Cunningham Cichlids, Wonder of Cichlids, Imperial Tropicals. I like Imperial. I like what they're doing. And a few others that I'm not remembering and I'll regret later. But, um, and certainly the sponsor of my channel, uh, The Cichlid Shack in Arizona. All of these folks will stand behind their product. All of them will give you a, a pretty much no, no hassle refund in the event of a DOA, dead on arrival. Uh, which is seldom the case, but they will. Uh, and they have different, you know, each of them carry stock that is unique to them. Dave's Rare, Dave's Rare is, uh, I was able to meet him. I think it's Dave Schumacher, been breeding for a very long time. He's very much into uh, fish that have become uh, endangered in, in the wild and, and starting projects to help breed them so that uh, they, they, they start to become more common in the hobby. So he's a good guy, Dave at uh, Dave's Rare. Dave's Rare. So there's a lot of a lot of great uh, fish keepers out there, or a lot of great fish retail outlets that are legit. If you know some more of them, share them below. Um, just be sure they're not what are called pop-up vendors. This is a term 
that I took from O'Shea over at the Wonder of Cichlids. I did an interview with him one time, and he talked about what are called pop-up vendors. These are people who show up on Facebook, usually on a social media platform, uh, and they, they make some announcement. Hey, I've got beautiful Maduka white lips and uh, three to four inches, and I got to let them go, you know, $15 free shipping. So, you know, 100 people send them a bunch of money, and they disappear. The money's gone. The, the, the guy or gal is gone, never to be heard from again. They're called pop-up vendors. Uh, really, really look for a vendor that's been around for a while, for a few years, and that is fully committed. Now, what do I mean by fully committed? When you go to their website or you go to their Instagram or Facebook uh, page, it, man, they have, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 tanks, and it's what they do. It's what they do. They're, they're, they're not somebody who just popped up out of nowhere. Now, that's different, let's say, from a local breeder. You know a person locally, they have some Lethronops red caps. Like if, if, if I was still in California and Kevin Green had some fish that looked like male red caps, I would not hesitate to get a few from him. So local breeders are a different game than buying, uh, you know, than buying from, let's say, a retail outlet. Okay, it's a different kind of game. And in that video, I talk about some of the buyer beware uh, signs and signals that you need to look for when you're ordering uh, when you're ordering on the web. Now, <clears throat> let me see here. I think somebody came in with a big super chat when I wasn't looking for the GT fund for the Green Terror fund. Hey, James, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. If you'd like some stickers and a towel, if you don't have one already, send me your mailing address, ben.o.cichlid, if you would like those. ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. I'll be happy to... Uh, anything over 20, I'm going to send you a towel, and I appreciate it. Appreciate the support. Cost me about eight bucks to ship it, so maybe I'm stupid. <laughs> Plus, YouTube takes a third of every super chat. Do you know that? Facebook takes a third. You know, the mafia used to take 20%. That was the, the VIG. Uh, the, the percentage you had to give the mafia was 20. Uh, YouTube takes 30%. <laughs> so there's a new mafia in town. <laughs> and they don't break your leg. They just, they just uh, delete your channels. <laughs> All right. Fishman Marcus says predatory fins, a little expensive. Uh, I got to meet that, uh, the fellow uh, from predatory fins and um, over at Aquashella. And uh, he's legit. He genuinely loves, loves fish. And um, that impressed me more than anything else. And he was right in the middle of having lost that, that gar. Uh, and some of his stingrays, and he was he was suffering. He was emotionally distraught and was trying really hard not to hide it, or trying hard to hide it because the show had to go on at Aquashella. But he was very, very upset. And that just, you know, people that don't care don't get upset. So that just told me how much he cares about his uh, fish, and uh, I was very, very impressed. So, um, at any rate, yeah, he's, he's legit and yeah, he's going to be expensive. You're going to find that if you want that dream fish that you've been looking for and you want them already grown up, somebody took three or four years to raise up that fish, all the food and everything involved, uh, the water, they're taking care of the parameters, the three or four that didn't make it, you know, that died along the way for whatever reason. And they've got one or two of these beautiful adult colored up fish that are a dream fish. So yeah, you're going to pay. You're going to pay 20, 40, 80, a hundred dollars for that fish. And you're going to pay 30 to $50 for shipping, maybe more depending where you are. Depends how bad you want that dream fish, you know?
And uh, I paid like $100 for an iBiter. When you added in shipping, I paid about $100 for that iBiter. I think I sold them for a lot less than that. But I wanted, uh, I was tired of growing out iBiters for a year and a half and finding out they were female. So I finally just broke down and bought an adult uh, colored up iBiter. And boy, was he a beast. Absolute beast. All right. So let's see. Any more questions? Ask them now. Richard Maloney. Thank you, my friend. SeaWorld in Michigan. Are you up at SeaWorld in Michigan, Richard? Or are you talking about all the rain you've had recently? And <laughs> Thank you for that super chat, my friend. And uh, Fishman Marcus, are you talking about the video uh, by uh, Predatory Fins? Yeah, it was, it was rough. It was rough to talk to him. I, he was putting on the face, I think, for the, for the crowd. But uh, when I told him I was a YouTuber, and I think he kind of opened up to me. And I, I kept it under wraps because I didn't want to share it until he had a chance to announce it. But, um, yeah, he was, he was devastated. And when you think that somebody might have come in and poisoned your fish, he was pretty sure, based on video, video that he had, that somebody had come in and possibly dropped something in either the tank or there was something with the food. And it might have been an intentional, some intentional action. So. Anyway, so let's take a look here. Any other questions? James Manning, a while back, you were trying so a contest to send pictures of a colorful fish. Uh, yes, I actually, if you remember, James, I don't know if you, if you missed that uh, live stream, but interestingly enough, before he became a moderator, uh, Jerry Martin had a geophagus, and that was the fish that actually won the, uh, the contest. It's in one of my, I think about three or four, uh, three or four live streams ago, and I presented uh, Jerry with uh, a little prize at, uh, at Aquashella. Where I was able to meet with him in person, we had dinner together, and I gave him a uh, a gift certificate and uh, some other goodies. So that's what happened to that to that contest. So last chance for comments, criticism. Uh, if there's any trolls out there, this is going to be your last chance to say something. <laughs> You know, I love the moderators. They they jump on, they delete the trolls very, very quick. Florida Fish Rescue. A uh, Florida Fish Rescue, uh, I, I am still following your channel and trying to figure out a way to get down to Florida. Maybe I can take a uh, a tour of the place and help you out a bit, give you a little bit of press. I'd love to do that. Uh, let's just stay in touch. Okay, you've got my email, ben.o.cichlid at gmail. Let's just stay in touch. And we'll work something out ultimately. Florida Fish, Fish Rescue, check them out on YouTube. They're helping out uh, folks who need to do something with their fish and also helping out uh, people with uh, issues that, that use keeping fish to help them with those issues, whether it's PTSD. Um, I mean, fish keeping can help with a lot of things. I mean, there's studies on heart rate and blood pressure and anxiety and PTSD. And the, so there's a lot of studies how fish keeping can actually help. And uh, Florida Fish Rescue, I believe, is uh, doing something in that area. So uh, hopefully we can get together and uh, help promote the cause there. So... Uh, World Aquarium Singapore, is this live and going to end soon? Uh, yes, it is live, my friend, and it will be ending uh, very shortly. I thank you for showing up. And, uh, and Matilda Harden, thanks for your videos about Fritz 7 and Turbo Start. Uh, Matilda, I started believing in Fritz 
when I had a breakout of uh, of Colomeris, and it was only the Fritz, only the Fitz Fritz product that stopped it, that actually stopped it. And uh, so I became a believer in Fritz. I contacted Fritz and asked them if I could do an interview with them, and I, and they agreed. Uh, and I just, I just like what they're doing. I think they're legit. And uh, the aquariums behind me are acting like what Corey at the Aquarium Co-op would call a seasoned aquarium. That's an aquarium that's been around for a while and has a lot of mome and good stuff growing in the substrate and growing on the, you know, it's, 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 a living, it's a living situation. And I think that the reason that these tanks were able to get there so quickly was because I used the uh, Fritz Turbo and the Fritz Zyme 7. That bacteria is actually legit. Now, that being said, if you're going to use products like that, be sure you use them exactly according to label. Do not put the product in untreated water or the, or the chlorine and chloramine will kill the bacteria. So be sure you treat the water first and then add the Fritz 7. That's one of the big mistakes people make. They fill up the tank, they add the Fritz, and they put the fish in, the fish die. All the bacteria died. It's not a water conditioner. Condition the water first, then add the Fritz product. Second, make sure that the product isn't expired. If you're using the refrigerated uh, Fritz product, I think that's the 700, be sure that it's not past the expiration date. If it's past the expiration date, throw it out. And uh, the stuff's legit. The stuff works. I like it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of unplugging and plugging in. I've got all of these wonderful sockets that were just put in, and I've got so many of these tanks running off of one strip, and so now I've got all these sockets, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spread all the electrical load across these different sockets. So it's going to be very, I mean, according to the electrician, he said it's going to be almost impossible. I'm going to be able to plug in my refrigerator. I'll be able to run my heaters my fans, and do live streams without the anxiety that a fuse is going to flip and everything's going to go dark. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get onto that. And one of you just asked that I show you the uh, show you the tanks one more time. Okay, here you go. Here's here's the here's the ninety. Look at that AC Hecli. When that fish gets its color, look at the, the, the streaming. The streamers coming off the dorsal. The viejas are beautiful. They're not chasing each other as much as they used to. And I can't wait for those uh, red shoulder severums to get, get larger. These fish are also going to have to eventually, this is 90 gallons, but they're probably going to have to go into a, uh, a 200 as well at some point. I understand that. Because I covered the tank with that piece of uh, plexi and it's pretty sealed up, I'm running that really strong air, air stone. You see that? The massive air stone. So I have a lot of surface tension breakup and a lot of oxygen in the water. And as a result, you'll notice none of my fish are working their mouths. Of course, in the tank behind me, in this tank behind me, you'll also notice no fish are working mouths. None of the fish in that tank you notice are moving their uh, opening and closing their mouths. If you have fish doing that, by the way, look at that let labradorm the, the top center there with the orange tail. He didn't let me film him for the rare cichlid video. He kept hiding. But you can take a look at him there. That, that light, bright blue face and that orange tail. Absolutely gorgeous. He's up in, the, up in the corner now. Usually very shy. When that hawk colors up, he's already starting to get red in his cheeks. He's got red around the gills. That's going to be a beautiful fish. If you've ever seen a hawk go over another fish and turn sideways, 
they actually are a a death from above. They're a uh, they come from above like an eye biter. So they go on one side and look at their prey with one eye and then drop on them. Malawi hawk, Aristochromus, also referred to as Aristochromus, because of arist aristocracy, they look down on you, and so they have a name associated with aristocracy, Aristochromus. And the other tank, which is probably, everybody tends to be hiding in this tank, but at least you get an idea. At least you get an idea of what's going on there. Closer. You can see the, um, that's the Plastodochromus johnsoni. Really pretty fish. And like I said earlier, the fish, like Skittles, he Skittles there, stuck there between the glass and the, they tend to hide when the lights are on and also because that dragon blood tries to control the center of the tank. And it'll be very interesting when I move that dragon blood out of there. You see the pile of substrate in the left corner? I leveled that out yesterday afternoon. And it's piled up again. So somebody in the, at, in, at night when I'm not looking is doing a lot of redecorating in this tank. Anyway, they're, they're being kind of shy right now. All right. Get to look at my head. See that Kuini? Kuini there on the, right along the edge of the tank. Beautiful fish. There's a Strigatus in there that sometimes can get confused for him. And to me, the insignis with that blue that, that turns into a yellow belly to me is just absolutely gorgeous. And of course, when that Bucachromus notatania puts on size and color, it's going to be amazing. All right. So I've used up an hour of your weekend. I thank you, everybody, for tuning in and uh, spending some time with me. And I hope I didn't miss any uh, any key questions or super chats. Thank you, everybody, that, that contributed to the channel today. I really appreciate that. It really helps. And uh, into the Green Terror Fund and into the Electrical Upgrade Fund. <laughs> and uh, again, a big shout out to James over at the Cichlid Shack for his sponsorship. And thank you to all of you. You, you rock, my friends. You keep me going. Keep this channel going. You continually instill me with uh, enthusiasm for the hobby, and I appreciate it. So with that, I will go ahead and end off. Thank you, World Aquarium Singapore. I'm glad you like them. Thank you, Yorel's Fishes, and uh, for showing up. Sean, thank you there, buddy. And Satya Say, and Robert Johnson. And I would like some clown loaches again. Looks like you folks all of a sudden making a lot of comments here. You're not you're not letting me go. <laughs> Casual aquatics, you're not in a timeout. Some people are more expensive. That's true. All right. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate uh, you showing up, and I hope to see you this coming Saturday for another uh, Cichlids and Coffee. And tune in tomorrow. I'm going to do a video on five weird bizarre, odd-looking cichlids, my favorite five weird-looking cichlids. See if you can guess which ones they are. Comment in the comments. And that's it for me. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.